What's going on everybody? My name is Josh Washburn at Washburn Fabco and today we're going to be taking a look at this Yes Welder Flux 135 Pro machine. I already did a review where we ran some flux core wire and seen how that welded and we went over the specs and all that good stuff. We're actually giving this machine away as well as a big old accessory and consumable bundle. To enter that go back to part one and check it out. Be sure to subscribe and comment on that video to be entered into that giveaway. We're also giving away a Yes Welder Cut 55 DS Pro, which we have a review on as well, and I'll link down below in the description. So today we're going to talk about everything stick related with this machine. This is a multi-process 110 machine. Uh, it can run flux core, stick welding rod, and it can scratch start TIG. So today we're going to look at the stick welding functions. We're going to be running some 332nd Exo Caliber Lincoln 7018 low hydrogen stick welding rod. We'll dive into some settings when we're stick welding. There's actually quite a few options on this machine, surprisingly for something that's on the budget level like this. There is an arc force and hot start, which is definitely nice to have. I mainly care about the hot start. The hot start will actually up your amperage when you're trying to strike the arc. If you've stick welded before on an older machine or a cheap machine, you know that sometimes just getting your bead going is a pain and you just keep sticking and getting frustrated. So a hot start will help you get your bead going to begin with, but the arc force is going to help sustain your bead if your electrode is really pushed in there tight and digging in. Sometimes the arc force setting is also called a dig setting. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be using today and we'll get this thing all hooked up and ready to roll. Here's our machine if you haven't seen our other video. It's a good little machine, lightweight super lightweight it's got rubber feet on the bottom full digital interface i'll go ahead and plug that in so you guys can see i currently had it on the flex core mode still from when i tried it out in the last video so let's go ahead and change that over with this mode button to stick welding we're going to run this 332 rod let's say around 85 90 should be good so for arc force a starting point i'm just going to put that out of three and for hot start i'm going to go ahead and put that all the way up to 10. i like a really hot start most of the time here is the electrode holder that they gave us for stick welding as you can see it's still tied up i haven't used it yet the stick rod that i'm going to be running is meant to be ran on dc ep which means direct current electrode positive. So we need to make sure our ground clamp is in the negative side. And this is the complete opposite of flux core. Flux core is DC EN or DC electrode negative. So we want our electrode positive, at least for this rod that I'm running right now. I actually wanna check out how high this amperage goes real quick. We go up to 135. We might be able to run 1 8 rod. I bet it's probably not good for the duty cycle. I'm running 1 8 at about 120, 125. Um, so you might want to keep under 1 8 in general. So I'm going to cut out some 3 16 coupons on the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR Plasma Table. Um, get those cleaned up and then we'll start welding. If you want to do some stick welding with 7018 or other low hydrogen rods, I highly recommend this rod oven here. It's going to be linked down below in the description in the Amazon Affiliates link. Um, the reason you need this is because a low hydrogen rod, the humidity and moisture pretty much ruins them. You'll start getting some weld defects and some porosity if your low hydrogen rods have been sitting out for a while, especially if you're in a really humid area. They say if you open a box, it's only really good for a day. so. If you're new to this and you just want to practice with low hydrogen rod and you want it to be good welds because you're learning how to do it the right way, I would say get a rod oven. This is only like 130 bucks, I think, and they have an even bigger one. This is just a 20 pound, the 20 pound does me good. So as I mentioned before, this is Lincoln Exo Caliber 7018 H4R in a 3.30 seconds diameter. We're going to start off by doing some stringer welds. Stringers are where you take your 
electrode and you just pull it there's no manipulation really whatsoever pretty much the easiest way to run it I might run a weave over the top or something just to see how it does so let's start out with some stringers just a reminder we're at 85 amps that's usually a pretty good starting point for 332nd rod first thing I noticed with this electrode holder is there's no straight connection to go like this at least I can't see if there is it looks like it's just a diagonal both ways in a straight down which is kind of strange but we'll make it work I couldn't really get the arc to stay running at 85 which 85 is my normal for this size um, you can see it stopped here stopped there there was nothing going on with my hand when it stopped um, it just the arc extinguished itself so I turned it up to 92 I think when I ran the rest of this and it was fine um, it almost doesn't really want to run a stringer that good, so I'm doing some manipulation, slight manipulation up and down like this. Not a whole lot, just a little tiny movement to make sure each side is fully fused. I'm going to run a cover pass over this side and we'll see how that goes. All right, that's a better look that we're looking for here. A little bit of porosity out there on the end. Um, still could probably turn it up a little bit hotter too. We got it running at 91. So I always run 85 on my other machines with this rod. Go ahead and bump this machine up a little bit higher than you think it needs to be. Um, sometimes the readout amperage isn't actually what the output amperage is. But... I was a little bit worried that maybe this machine wasn't going to run too well with stick rod on 110, but it seems to work out fine. Is everybody in the middle of heat wave or just me? All right, guys, final opinion here on this Yes Welder Flux 135 Pro stick welding wise, it will run it. You know, like I mentioned earlier, I, I was kind of concerned at first that maybe I was just hitting a duty cycle issue right away, but it just needed some more amperage and it didn't give me no problems once the amperage was up. This is a great machine if you don't have 220 at your house and you don't want to spend a lot of money and you don't want to pay an electrician to put in 220 or you, you don't know how to do it yourself or don't want to do it yourself. This machine will get you by to do your home small farm projects and stuff like that. In my opinion, I would always run a 220 machine and that's just because I run 220 machines on everything. That way I don't really have any hiccups with duty cycle and stuff like that. And surprisingly enough, my most preferred stick welding machine, even over my MPX 330, the big welder generator from Lincoln, is honestly my Art Captain TIG 200. That thing has put down so much 7018 rod in one day, it's crazy. I've done like 50 pounds maybe in one day of like big rod, like 532nd rod. Just because the price tag on the machine is low, doesn't mean that it's not a good machine. Some people get turned off by that. I'm convinced that a lot of the more budget and entry level machines, internal components are probably made at the same factories that make the Lincoln or Miller. Or I think the main thing that you're paying for when you get a big name machine is the sticker on the side that says where you got it from. Don't underestimate these little machines. They can get a lot of work done. If I played with this a little bit more, I could definitely get some better looking welds out of it, I'm sure. I only burn through like three or four rods right now. You could definitely learn how to weld with just this machine and this low budget. You know, it's under 200 bucks. You can't really beat that. My first machine was like 2,500 bucks. And if I would have known back then that I could have got something more like this, or maybe the bigger model from Yes Welder, the 205, uh, with 220 still for a good price point which they are they're like 400 bucks or less I think and 
get the same weld quality out of it, learn the same out of it, I would have just went the cheaper route. I have completely been yet to see any issues with Yes Welder or Art Captain machines whatsoever, and I think either one is a great pick when you're just starting out. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and don't miss out at the two giveaways linked in the description below. If you want to purchase this machine, you can use code WashburnFabco at checkout on Yes Welder's website. There will also be a link to my Amazon affiliates below where I have a list of all the welders that I have used in shop and in my reviews where you can purchase them through Amazon. If you have one of these Flux 135 Pro and have used it more than I have since I've just used it for testing, drop a comment below and let everybody know what you think of it.